Over the years, Samsung has made a lot of tablets, but despite its efforts, it's failed to take on the full-sized iPad and actually win. But Samsung reckons it's finally cracked it with the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. Like the Note 3, it comes with the S Pen and has four times the number of pixels as its predecessor, so now boasts an upgraded 2560 by 600 pixel screen that's higher than the iPad Air. Now it picks up slightly more detail than the iPad 2, which makes it ideal for snaps taken on your high-res DSLR. The iPad just about has the edge when playing back 1080p footage, both in terms of smoothness and sharpness, but overall, the Note 10.1 still has a cracker of a screen. In fact, one of the best we've ever seen on a 10-inch tablet. Everything from web browsing to the huge assortment of apps to the best 3D games look fantastic on screen. Then there's the S Pen, which is more responsive this time and has borrowed a few cool tricks from the Note 3, like Air Command for features such as Action Memo, which is great for making quick notes that can come to life to carry out relevant actions, pen window for a list of compatible apps that appear in a specially drawn box, and S Finder or Universal Search which sifts through everything on the device, even handwritten notes. The S Note app has a clean new interface too, and jotting away with the stylus works well and definitely beats typing on a virtual keyboard. Now, the Samsung competes with the iPad on brains, not beauty. From the front, it looks like any other Samsung tablet, so glossy white with a plastic finish. But at least the bezels help to make it look less odd than most 16x9 tablets in portrait mode. Then there's the fake leather and stitching around the back, which we quite like, and it feels ever so slightly more comfortable than the iPad when rested on your lap, but looks a bit tacky in white. Swiping up from the bottom reveals its rather lovely magazine UX user interface that's been laid over Android 4.3 Jelly Bean for a brilliantly designed flipboard powered stream of all your news and social updates. We quite like the scrollable widgets on the home screen too. And another main attraction is still the multi-window for split-screen apps, which works even better than before. It's still restricted to mostly Samsung and Google apps like email, maps and the browser, but it's still a pretty nifty feature. Sadly, it still feels somewhat cluttered thanks to too much duplication with the Samsung Hub and Apps widgets on top of the Play Store, Play Music and other Google options, plus the doubled up apps for emails and photos. But to put a more positive spin on it, you've got the most all-singing, all-dancing home screen without having to download a single app. Now, Battery Life is also pretty impressive. With a 1080p video on loop, it lasted four hours and 45 minutes on half brightness and with Wi-Fi switched on. That means you're also looking at around nine to 10 hours of regular usage. But we've got to be honest, we expected more from the 1.9 gigahertz quad-core processor. The Note 10.1 experience can be fluid, but we found ourselves jabbing at icons or buttons more than once. And while hiccups are far from constant and it chews through demanding apps and games, there's certainly room for a firmware improvement. And for a tablet, the Note 10.1's cameras are actually fairly capable. The 8 megapixel rear camera with autofocus and an LED flash takes detailed, well-exposed shots when needed, while the 2 megapixel front facer is perfectly suited for clear Skype chats. So the Note 10.1 can do everything you want a tablet to do. It's cleverer than the iPad, with a screen that's better than nearly every other Android tablet out there. Chuck in micro SD expandability, and you're looking at Samsung's best tablet yet. It's just a shame that that's not quite good enough to kick the iPad off its pedestal. Here at Stuff, we care about you guys just as much as all the newfangled tech that winds up on our desks. So we'd love to hear what you think. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. And of course, for your daily tech fix, make sure you visit our website, stuff.tv, for the latest and coolest gadget news and reviews. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe. Come on, tell your mates.